B2B Cambodia, the portal for business news in Cambodia. I'm B2B Cambodia's Darshana. Thanks for watching. Today we'll be speaking with Dr. Ashish Kakar, Research Director on Financial Insights at IDC Asia Pacific. Dr. Kakar has over 20 years of experience in financial services research, banking, insurance, and investments. He's also one of B2B Cambodia's expert guest writers. Hi, and thank you so much for being with us today. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. So for my first question, in terms of digitalization, what would you say are some of the biggest challenges that banks and financial institutions face here in Cambodia? Digitalization needs money. How do you generate that money? And one of my basic things which I've been looking at, which has been IMF finding as well, is that Cambodia is an overbank market. I mean, just to give an example, if you add the deposit taking MFIs, the total around 73 banks, right, for 14.2 million accounts. So that says that every bank has around, on an average, 200,000 accounts. Even if we look at markets like Vietnam, it's 450,000, right? Mm -hmm. Banks need to generate money somehow for digitalization. Secondly, even if you look at the product mix, while well, QR codes is doing tremendously well, the credit facilities are still not there. If you look at the credit facilities, they are the credit transactions, the last available number was 22, was around 10% of the QR code transactions. How do banks make money? Digitalization needs money. I think that's the first challenge. The second challenge which I've actually seen here is that, look, for all said and done, I mean, I have to kind of admit that Cambodia as a market is doing fairly well in digitalization. Um, there are smart branches coming up. Banks are really trying to digitalize. The QR codes is a phenomenal system, the way it's been built by the central bank. It's a phenomenal system. But it's just that the whole concept of what do you digitalize, right? Mm -hmm. So I've, when I was looking at the banks, you have the bigger banks where it makes sense to digitalize everything. And there are smaller banks where you probably need to be a little bit more selective in terms of what you digitalize. And mm -hmm. that's not something which I'm seeing coming across. Uh, so what are some tips that you might offer to the smaller banks, especially when it comes to the digitalization process and in integrating new technologies? So one thing is obviously that there is a lot of uh, technology development which is happening right across the border in Vietnam, right? And the cost of a Vietnam resource is similar to the cost of a Kaima resort, mm -hmm. right? The biggest challenge for a smaller bank is how do you get, how do you generate that money? So you want a solution which is cheaper, gives the same thing, but is probably achieved uh, at a third of the cost or a fourth of the cost, right? So you have to really start looking at some of these new developing markets and see whether the capability is coming out there. That's one. Two, the whole world is now moving towards more like software as a service. You don't need to buy software. You know, when I was in the bank, we used to have these capital approval processes where you would go and say, I need to do this in the call center, I need $10 million, and it would be a big hassle. Now you don't need that. You have a software as a service provider. You can hook up to that. Do it as more like an OPEX. If you can run it as an OPEX and it works, then you can possibly look at integrating it as a full-fledged solution. So when you look at Cambodia's financial infrastructure, what else do you think is needed uh, in terms of technological development and um, the evolution of services? That's a very good question. So I think the first thing which is needed is connectivity. So uh, even when I'm here, Cambodia is a personal trip. The moment I get out of uh, Phnom Penh, there's no connectivity. There's no, there's, I mean, there's, there's a challenge even in connecting up to a mobile network, right? So connectivity is a challenge. So if you're actually trying to develop a whole digital ecosystem, you need a strong connectivity, right? Two, the world is now moving towards more of your cloud computing. And again, I don't, I don't mean to say cloud should be for everything, but you should look at where cloud can fit in. You should look at where AIs can fit in. And post-COVID, when the interest rates have gone up, is you do have a high NPL. Now, that may challenge the financial resiliency to some point, although I believe NBC is fairly comfortable and they're fairly confident and they've come out openly in statements saying that they don't expect that to be a challenge. You have to look at connectivity. That's clearly a clear in us. Uh, you have to look at some of the modern technologies like cloud. 
things like digital, things like AI. And here I would say AI, not Gen AI, because Gen AI itself is a very expensive technology to run, right? I don't know how many banks in Asia are able to run Gen AI, forget Cambodia, right? I mean, obviously, the, even the bigger banks are finding it challenged to run that. Uh, and just look at the financial resiliency because there might be certain banks which are going down. But what would you say are the main advantages that AI can bring for you know other banks that may not be considering it yet? AI, yeah, in a way, is a very powerful tool. And I was actually in one another ASEAN country last week where every discussion was on AI, mm. right? And my advice to the banks has always been the same, that you pick the battles you want to win. AI has been known to work effectively in the financial crime and the credit side. AI has been known to work effectively on the call center side, which is more of your servicing. And AI has been known to work effectively on your back office operation side, right? And which is which includes the data center operations. One of my discussions in Cambodia was with an insurance company where we were trying to see how we make the medical claims profitable because apparently the medical claims has been a strain on insurance companies at the moment, right? And that's where I, at least in my view, AI fits in very well because AI can help you evaluate whether a claim is justifiable or not, whether it's out of pattern, and that can help you make that whole business profitable. I mean, just think about this, right? I mean, medical is a basic requirement for all the people. And if the medical claims itself becomes unsustainable and people stop offering that, how do you take care of your people?